Hey guys, Matt. There is one more section of the fraud that is a perfect transition to the more important part of the book, understanding the mechanism that's here, understanding what it's out to do, how we can help ourselves, how we can use and understand what the system's trying to do and actually help us make life choices. So I did decide to skip the last, I don't know, five, six chapters of this endless fraud presentation, maybe even eight chapters, but we don't need that anymore. We don't need to spend one more second talking about fake shootings. We know this whole world is a fraudulent system, especially the people here now. The people reading the book will need to read those things. Anybody here now understands those things. So, uh, for example, you know, uh, I spent days researching Paris. Um, we would have done a whole section on that. You, you know all this. I mean, we know all this. We need to move on to more important things. You know, why there at Paris there was um, there's eight thousand firefighters. The firefighters are actually part of the Paris army and the military. They have eighty fire stations around the city, with over a hundred pumping trucks and you know where I'm going with this section. Uh, they they got three hoses. They got three hoses onto the chapel uh, in the first hour and a half to two hours when there should have been hundreds of hoses and pumping stations around the Seine. So, I mean, just things like this, which are interesting, but we need to move on. I had a section about the Civil War and how, I'm sorry, it's just nonsensical that General Lee would would line up armies uh, toe to toe with the North, time after time, when the North has uh, basically unlimited financial uh, resources, all the factories, uh, the infrastructure, and why Lee didn't change his tactics uh, after lining up and going toe to toe with the North, and after the first four or five battles is ridiculous and nonsensical and, and there was a whole section on that in the book and um, you know why would he even try to invade the north and go into Pennsylvania and Gettysburg when it was about secession so th there's a whole host of issues all over the place and but we are moving forward this section is on the legal fiction the straw man and it is it's still part of the fraud presentation it's the last fraud presentation, but it's a perfect segue, because the end of it is, here we go, starting to get into empowerment, starting to get into, I do not comply with this system, what can we do about it, and um, it's a great segue, this legal fiction and straw man, so I'll start the reading now. Chapter 46, Your Avatar and the Legal Fiction slash Straw Man. Now, real, just a quick note before I start the reading, guys. Uh, this can get complicated, and I tried to present this in a way so even those relatively new to this concept will be able to understand it. Uh, okay. It appears this entire world is constructed so you don't know you. And if you do, you believe you're someone else. The script of society wants to keep you away from really discovering your true sense of self. Think of the avatar body as the hardware on a computer. What we really are, in spirit, is more akin to the software that uses the CPU, the brain of the computer, or our brain, but is also, quote, backed up to somewhere else, like the cloud. Its likely consciousness is not local to the space between your ears. It could be that the modern physical brain, yes, the modern, today's physical brain, it implies it may be different than what it once was. The modern physical brain may actually be a governor or a reducer on what we can be or become in this realm, or even what we have been in the past. The, quote, modern brain may be an unnatural limitation to what should be wondrous human abilities. The last few sentences implies that our race may have been screwed with at some point in history. It's more than just possible to me. I think even now we're being changed. No matter what methods we agree on, we're being molded 
into something else. The minions who designed the runes on the back of the dollar bill have manipulated basically everything. Why should we assume we and the human body have been immune to changes when they've put their sticky fingers into almost everything else and changed almost everything else around it, around us, or at least moved it away from what we would consider natural? I don't think I'm the only thing immune to all the things they put their sticky fingers into, do you? I don't know, do these types of conversations take place? Administrator, you've done a fine job. Most are dumbed down zombies, but a few can see. A few are actually getting smart and beginning to notice. I agree, Your Majesty. We'll just dumb them down again. Should we hit the same DNA sequence as last time, or will 5G be good enough, do you think? No, Administrator. Resequence the same chromosome set just in case. 5G may not be enough. Again, who knows, but I'm going to assume a conversation like that somewhere maybe takes place, or probably takes place. I mean, who knows what we've been subject to over a hundred millennia. Five pathetic senses bring no real truth to our immortal selves through this stinky avatar. We can't even see 99 point whatever percent of the wave spectrum of the universe. People like Stephen Hawking think they're figuring everything out just using the visible light spectrum. It's like studying the Egyptian Book of the Dead from one page torn out and thinking you're close to getting it. Scientists are the most brilliant morons you'll ever come across. Your body is an avatar, like a rental car, a ride through this life. Your consciousness is likely somewhere else. Your soul or spirit essence is probably also somewhere else. It's possible that a part is here, and the part that is here may be temporarily trapped in this reality to be recycled over and over again. We've all heard those stories. I'll keep it on the table. Does that bring forth the notion of Horcrux from the Harry Potter movies? Does that come to mind? To me it does. Truth in movies, that's that's a relatively disturbing a- aspect. But unfortunately, you know, that's on the table. Everything's on the table at this point. But on a more positive note, the part of our spirit that's here in this realm in the rental car, may simply be having a simple learning experience, and then you'll be on your way when it's over. There's no doubt that the system or the pusher man of this realm wants us believing we are only the body and only the ego, and it never wants us to consider the main part of what we are is something else, something far beyond that, and somewhere else, something much greater than this, the avatar. When was the last time you've heard the news, or Ellen, or Oprah, talk about just avatar body and spirit essence? Never. They don't ever talk about anything like the things we're talking about now. That's a great sign, because we know if the system isn't talking about it, then it's likely real. They only talk about, in the Ellen or Oprah show, the, the concepts that relate to the body and the ego. That's all any form of media talks about. That's all there is. Body and ego. They love the concept of race, gender, bullying, sexual abuse, and Obama. Obama popped his weasel little head up at the Toronto Raptors uh, Golden State Warriors final, and everyone like, oh, Obama's in the ever like bowed down to him. I mean, give me a break. But it's wonderful news that uh, all of media... And the Ellen Alkalites, all they want to do is to remind you how you're only avatar and ego. Well, that's wonderful, because it tells me the truth is, 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 the, is the best case scenario for us. One way the system wields control over humanity and gets them to move away from their divine aspects is through the legal fiction. Before I explain that, let me admit I'm not an expert at all in this area. There are several people, or many people, who have made this their life study, and I'll summarize their findings the best I can. It's fascinating work, but it's very complicated. Like many things in this book, at first you'll think this concept is ridiculous. That just can't be right. But it's pretty much true and proven. The core of it um, has been around a long time. It's just, um, you know, we've, we've all stumbled upon this concept over the years. But it, it takes a, a long study to really get a grasp as to what this is all about. I don't know personally how far it goes. For those not familiar with this, the following will seem very strange. However, it's accurate. 
read through slowly or I'll, I'll speak slowly. Um, and please understand, uh, this is a very important concept. In this world of the materialistic illusion, you are not you. You are not you. From the perspective of the system and from the perspective of society in general, you are your first name, last name. First name, all caps, last name, all caps. That's what you are from the perspective of the system. That's the name on all legal documents. The name on all legal documents appears in all caps. That is not you. They want you to believe that first name, last name is you. And everything you are is contained in first name, last name. They want you to believe that with every cell in your body. That's part of the trick. That's all there is to you. First name, last name. At your moment of birth, your foot's soul, S-O-L-E slash S-O-U-L, is imprinted, and you're given a name by your parents. Pausing for a second to go away from the book, they took my soul print, footprint, at birth. I don't know if they still do it. Haven't researched into that. But, you know, mine was taken, and, and billions of us, or millions of us ha- have been. I don't know if that's still uh, a recent you know, practice. They might say, we got them in so many different areas. We got their soul bound up in so many different areas. Maybe they'll catch on if we keep taking the baby's footprint. So let's just do away with that because it makes no sense. And morons like people of this channel will actually use it uh, as as uh, as incriminating evidence against us. So tell, let me know in the comments if anybody knows for sure if the baby's footprint is still taken. Okay, back to the reading. You're born, you're given a name by your parents. Unless your name is Pony Boy. Your parents chose your name basically from a system-generated system list. Everybody's got basically the same name. The time of your birth, the system sets up a straw man of that same name. Again, at the time of your birth, the system establishes a straw man, a legal fiction, in that name. But just like on legal documents of incorporation, that name appears in all caps, where when you write your name, that represents everything you think you are or know you are, you just capitalize the first letter. Your birth certificate lists that name in all caps. Your social security card displays the name in all caps. Passport, driver's license, all the same thing, all caps. So there's like there's you where you write your name with just the first letter capitalized and then there's the name that appears to be the same, but it's in all caps. That's not you, okay? Almost no one has ever considered the reason for this outside of people in our circles, of course. Amazingly, there's one guy now in Kalamazoo, Michigan, hearing this, I wrote reading this, and crying out, it's in all caps, dummy, so people at the airport can read it better and lines move along more efficiently. Good guess, but that's not it. The dead straw man entity, in all caps, is the legal fiction that the system interacts with. Okay? It's the legal fiction that the system interacts with. I know it's all very confusing at this point, especially if this concept is new to you. Don't laugh at it or blow it off. It's all very real. The system is a soulless entity, so it must interact with a soulless entity, which is, first name in all caps, last name in all caps. It can't interact with you, your divine self, so it's created like a copy or a clone. Think of it like that. Another way to understand it is to picture that on the day of your birth, they simply create your twin. Your twin is an invisible illusion that exists inside the system or matrix. You are alive. Your twin is dead. or it's, That's a wrong word. Dead implies it was once alive. It, it's of nothingness. Okay, your, your twin but in terms of how you need to operate or go through the maze of society, it is supposed to be your, your mimic. The entire system is a massive lineup of corporations. Your city and town is likely a corporation. The judges and police, then, are employees of these corporations, not civil servants on the side of a police car, to protect and serve. Of what? To prote- it means to protect and serve the system itself. 
on the side of a police car to protect and to serve? How come it never says, uh, why isn't there ever any variation? Why doesn't it ever say, protecting and serving the people of Exton, Pennsylvania since uh, 19 whatever? It, it, there is never any variation to protect and serve what? The system. Okay? They're not civil servants. They're employees of a corporation. A fiction, a corporation, must interact with a fiction, your legal straw man. Put another way, worth repeating, they, or the tentacles of the system, must interact with your straw man or legal fiction. Not Can't interact with you, because it's not on the same level of, as you, frequency of you. It's not a divine being like you. Now, they send notices and driver's license renewals to who? To first name all caps, last name all caps. But that's not really you. They don't interact with you, the immortal spirit essence, directly. When you're forced to go to court, it's your cartoon twin that is subpoenaed, not you. When you show up for jury duty, when your corporate fiction is called, it's you that shows up, but you were never called, if you see what I mean. At the very basic level, this is another contract or method of consent. Or getting you to agree to a soul contract is another trick. When the system requires something of you, it commands your legal fiction of first name in all caps, last name in all caps, commands that entity to do it. Then, all we spirited beings with free will are right there to say yes to the system, bow down to it, and breathe life into it, and obey our masters by doing whatever that notice or subpoena says we should do. Since we comply with it with no objections at all, most of us, this is just another get-out-of-jail-free card, in my opinion, for the system to keep on operating the same way, without them having to pay a high price in what I call the cosmic karma game. It's a get, They've created a get-out-of-jail-free card, put it another way, so they could just keep screwing us over, at least in that segment of how they're screwing us over. Now, we and many people are changing this. This is our goal, to change this. Being tricked should not get any of them, or any of the minions of the system, or whatever stands behind it, being tricked shouldn't get any of them out of the price that they will eventually have to pay. To me, the legal fiction appears to be just another tool they wield to get them an inch closer to their goals the never-ending quest to rob us of what we call our humanity. That's all it's about. Every day, move them closer to Schmeagel, move them closer to Gollum. It's pretty much that simple. Basically, the entire system is out to steal our humanity over the course of a lifetime. Now, I don't like the word humanity at all. I've said that before. Because it's a system designation, like R2-D2 and Doctor. You know, who, where the word humanity came from them. We should work to replace those words like humanity and human being and replace homo sapien, all their terms. that probably have a sick rune associated with it or some sort of weird lesser magic associated with it. We should replace those terms and come up with whatever we think is appropriate on our own. Like in the movie, That Kid in the Dead Poets Society with Robin Williams, That Kid in the Dead Poets Society started calling himself Nuwanda. He said, call me Nuwanda. And remember, he was getting red or what he wrote. He put red on his chest for virility. That that kid, you know, was, was already... He, he, truth drops in movies? Yeah. That kid, just something in him, he had to break the invisible chains of the system. And basically, he would get thrown out. He just could not comply. And, and, you know, he probably didn't even know why he was acting the way he did. Um, he sensed very early on that character, uh, what took us a long time to understand. Now, there are people supposedly expert in this area who claim to teach people how to separate from their corporate fiction, separate from this legal avatar of caps, first name, last name. It's kind of like a divorce of one tentacle of the system that's up your ass right now. Divorcing one tentacle at a time. That's what we're out to do, actually. Um, we're out to divorce one tentacle at a time. That's a good mental picture. That's what the rest of this book is about. Some claim if you separate and declare sovereignty away from your legal fiction, 
you can then no longer pay taxes and you don't have to pay this and that and certain legal proceedings have no authority over you anymore like jury duty etc and blah 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 now i find these ideas fascinating but very dangerous even if one does take the proper steps the perfect steps to remove the legal fiction from one's personal sovereignty for example I've always personally doubted that the judges, the IRS agents, all the minions of the system, everybody associated with the legal system, cops, etc., everybody on the lower levels, they're not going to have any idea what the hell you're talking about. Really? They're all in on it? They're all well-versed in this concept? No, in my opinion. Many of these experts teach people how to reclaim their straw man and to step into their sovereignty under natural law. Many who claim they can do that for people, and hey, I support them, but they advise, most of them advise a very radical behavior behavior in dealing with courts, judges, and police by throwing, for example, the Uniform Commercial Code at them, back at them in a different way, and citing contract law and throwing it back in their face. For example, they may advise mailing back parking tickets with letters associated or, or attached to them informing the corporation of your local town that you legally own the roads and you didn't enter into a contract with them stating you didn't agree to park there so this parking ticket is invalid now it's, it's yeah that even sounds strange to me i'm not going to do that and it it sounds incredibly strange to anybody where this concept is new to them but look these people uh, they've studied this for a long time and they employ these methods and they claim these methods work um, many advocate you don't need a driver's license to drive and you can even win that if pulled over no there are hundreds of these types of examples no matter how solid the legal basis is for these techniques I imagine the people who work down at the county courthouse would not be educated on these things themselves. This is highly dangerous practice. I don't do it. I don't plan on doing it. I can imagine the people who are attempting to wield this as a valid defense are going to get double fines and even imprisonment in many cases because of their apparent lack of compliance. Some of the county people that you'd pull this on would probably consider calling the van with the straitjackets. Even if it's all true, again, they wouldn't understand. Experts in this area claim that almost all judges and even most police officers are generally aware of these concepts. I highly doubt that. I'm certainly one to believe in big giant conspiracy. Like, who are you talking to here, right? But believe that tens of thousands of police officers are in on it, in on this concept and they're going to have a full understanding of the complicated straw man principles? No way, in my opinion. I bet a lot of these people who refuse to comply, I think but probably eventually they do win, probably. Many win. The basis of, the, of all this is valid, and many will probably win, but only after fighting it out, probably, for years. They may need to finally reach somebody higher up, or way high up, who understands the strange arguments or what would appear to be very strange arguments that they'd be making. Again, in my opinion, the lower levels have no concept of this, and they'll probably just be happy to impose maximum penalty. I absolutely do not recommend doing this uh, at any level, um, unless you're extremely confident and have gone through these courses, and it is ex you're extremely passionate to fight in this area. And certainly, you know, don't ever do it casually, unless you know exactly what you're doing. Never do it to an officer that approaches your car window. Don't do it, especially if you need to get where you're going that evening. Not a good idea. I applaud people who have the guts to use this defense. Great for them. I, I wish you all the luck in the world. Personally, though, I figure there are battles to fight on other fronts. Spending time in jail because I refused to follow the steps of my legal fiction, what the legal fiction was required to do procedurally, um, it's not my fight of choice at this time. I will continue to pay my taxes and continue uh, to fight another day and fight in other ways. There's another problem I've found before I would ever consider taking the advice of these experts that say to actually go about doing all of this. Because many of the experts that I've listened to that have take, you know, taken years and studied the nature of the legal fiction, they talk about it, or many talk about it, like it's all about money. And to me, no way. 
Okay, They talk about how essentially your birth certificate is traded on the commodities exchanges as an asset, like you are some kind of bond that funds can be drawn upon and um, collateral and things like that. Um, now, we may be all of this. That may all be true. But to me, the, the structuring it that way has nothing to do with money. This is a spiritual battle. To me, many people who say they figured it out, figured out uh, everything aspect of how the legal fiction works, they're missing the big point. How could it be about money when they can print up whatever they want at the Fed in 10 seconds? Why would they need all this complicated legal wrangling and backroom secret bond deals that monetize a human life as a commodity like cattle when they can just print up trillions at the Fed on a keyboard in 10 seconds? No, to me, it's not about money at all. They don't need money. For now, and for lack of better words, all of this, to me, is part of the spiritual battle that happens on many fronts, where they're taking tiny bits of you and willingly taking your soul tokens. If they can convince you that you're nothing more than your legal fiction name in all caps, then in a tiny way, they've reduced your spiritual essence to a degree. They've taken something from you. To the system, soul tokens giving willingly are the best kind to them. Does that mean nothing can be done? We're just powerless? What, what can we do? Of course there's things we can do. We know a life trick is at play here. We know that. So I believe acknowledging that we see the trick is a very powerful start. I mean, remember um, the, the concept and, and things we talked about in the past where um, you know, the scenario where the, the demon is laughing over the soul that's been degraded and, and you know, the soul says, why, don't, why do you keep doing this to me? And the demon says, you know, because you never asked. You, you, you never demanded anything better. You never um, just, you know, declared that, that, that you wouldn't participate in this. So we've been feeding off you for millennia. You know, and I don't like the word ask because you never asked for anything better. I don't like that at all. Who are you asking? You know, we have the power within ourselves. I don't like, I, I don't like ask, but in this, in this demon standing over you scenario, it kind of works. Like, well, why do we keep doing it? Because you just never asked to get out. You know, it could be that simple. Uh, declaring. So why not start with the basics here and acknowledge we see the trick? You know, you look down at your at your license, first name, last name, acknowledge it. That's not me. Attention system, this isn't me. You've been trying to screw me like this for my entire life. And, and you know, just proclamation, why not? I see and now understand that this system wants me to believe I am the name on my driver's license. And it wants me to believe I'm this name that appears in all caps on all these other documents. The system wants me to believe I am only this name, and it wants me to solely identify, interesting, I wrote solely like only, <laughs> play on words, solely identify with this dead legal straw man, some myth it created at my birth. Now, say it out loud, go ahead. Now I see the trick, and I declare that this name is not who I am. It is not what I am. Because I've now awoken to this in the middle of this system, pop my head up out of the water, I'm in the middle of this system, I'm not quite ready to go live in a cardboard box in Montana. So I'll admit, out loud here, I must continue to use this name and keep certain documents with this, league, this, this corporate illusion up to date. For example, this system, your system, won't let me travel using uh, airplanes and other th things like that without these documents bearing this fictional name. So I must keep them up to date if I want to travel to see my loved ones. However, I declare I give no energy to the system anymore by being forced to use it. Any power or energy of any kind it has taken from me um, using this method of deception, I now take back. Guys, it's this type of self-empowerment and making the system impotent, that will be our focus going forward. And it, it, some of these um, declaration solutions seem kind of ridiculous or hokey, or declaring it out loud, or every time you see the name on your driver's license, just saying, I, I'm going to remind myself, that's not me. That's the system trying to steal 
my spiritual essence. If it sounds ridiculous or embarrassing, that's because the system wants it that way. We've all been brought up into this. If it's if it's if it's cool, it ain't going to be the answer, right? It ain't cool. If it sounds ridiculous, that's probably the answer. And have you ever heard anybody in any form of media ever talk about anything? No. To me, that says we're probably on the right track. Just coming back for one last little segment. I didn't write this in the book, but in proofing this, what's the logical end of all this? If we truly believe this is a manipulation of the system, I absolutely believe that that's what it's doing to us, using this name in all caps. I think everybody listening to this would believe that. Then the, the final way to separate from it is to give yourself a name. Give yourself a name that represents you. It's, is that a truth drop in the Dead Poets Society? It says, call me Nuwanda. Yeah, it's a truth drop in my opinion. Call me Nuwanda. I'm going to choose something, I don't know, a little bit better than Nuwanda. But I, you know, name yourself then. Think about it. Why not? Why not, if to take, to use that to take the first step, if you so choose to? I don't think you have to or anything like that. These are all suggestions, um, but it might work for some people.